In this video I'm going to be emphasizing the fact that you can find the limit of continuous functions by using direct substitution. Now the easiest and probably one of the first things that you do is you start finding the limits of polynomial functions and that you do that with a direct substitution because polynomial functions are smooth and continuous and go on forever and ever in both directions. Okay, so that's what they introduce you to. Now you can if you stop and think about all of your other different types of functions, there's several other functions that are continuous. All right, our sine function is continuous. All right, so you can take the limit of the sine function by doing a simple direct substitution. Same thing with cosine. Okay, cosine is a continuous function. So again, a direct substitution is going to help you find that limit very easily. If you're in an early transcendental calculus class where they're introducing those transcendental functions as early as chapter one with your limits, all right, then e to the x is a continuous function, so a direct substitution will work there as well, as um, with the natural log function. All right, now on this one, the condition is though that our constant here, our a, must be greater than zero. All right, you can also do this with your inverse trig functions, all right, as long as there are conditions that are met, all right, the inverse sine function is continuous in between negative 1 and 1, same thing with cosine, and then tangents continuous from negative infinity to infinity. So as long as you are approaching a value that's in that interval, then you're going to be able to do a simple direct substitution on those as well. And because direct substitution is relatively simple, I thought I would just do one example here. Let's suppose we're taking the limit as x approaches 0 of the inverse sine of x plus 1 over 2. All right. First thing you're going to do is you're going to check to see if the constant of what you're approaching here is falls within the given interval, and it does. So I am going to be able to use a direct substitution. When showing your work, as soon as you do that direct substitution, this limit notation goes away. So then I'm going to have this inverse sine of 0 plus 1 over 2, which is the inverse sine of 1 half. And hopefully you were really good with your trig and you can just have this one memorized. The inverse sine of 1 half is going to be pi over 6. All right, so all of your limits of continuous functions are going to be able to be found that simple by just simply using a direct substitution. Thanks for watching. Be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends. Thanks.